Erica here with Prep Scholar GRE, here to tell you about how I got an almost perfect GRE score and how you can too. If you like this video, subscribe for more great content and check us out at gre.prepscholar.com to learn more about what Prep Scholar GRE can do for you. Before we jump into my personal strategies, it's critical to understand how the GRE algorithm works to get a perfect score. There are six sections on the GRE, the essay section, two 20 question verbal sections, two 20 questions quantitative sections, and one 20 question experimental section, which may be either verbal or quantitative, or instead of the experimental section, a research section. The essay section and experimental section or research section do not count towards your total score. This means you can totally bomb either one and still end up with a perfect score. The essay section is recognizable and will always come first. Similarly, if you get a research section, it will come at the end of the exam and be preceded by information that indicates the section will be unscored. However, the unscored experimental section looks just like any other verbal or quant section and can come at any point in order. This means that if you get an experimental section, you will not know which section is experimental and won't count toward your score. We'll talk more about this later in the video. So the two scored verbal and two scored quant sections are the only sections that count toward your total score. The first section of each type is the same difficulty for everyone. The questions are preset, meaning you can skip questions and come back to them. Again, more on this later. Depending on the number of questions you get wrong and right on the first section, you will get one of three second sections, an easy second section, a medium second section, or a hard second section. While the section you get will vary, like the questions in the first section, the questions in the second section are preset. So once again, you can skip questions and come back to them. Now for scoring. We start with a raw score for each section. So the number of questions you got right. Then your score on each section is scaled based on the difficulty of the second section. In essence, answering a hard question right gets you more points than answering a medium question right, which in turn gets you more points than answering an easy question right. Finally, slight adjustments are made to account for variations in difficulty across different versions of the test. Now, no one outside of ETS knows exactly how this raw to scaled score conversion works out, but from the data we've been able to gather, there isn't much room for error if you're aiming for a perfect score. For verbal, you may be able to miss a single question across the two sections and still get a perfect score. Quant is even less forgiving. It doesn't appear that you can miss any questions and still get a perfect score. So what does this indicate about my scores? I got a 170 on verbal. So because verbal is typically more forgiving than quant, there's a good chance that I missed one question across the two sections and still got a perfect score. Now for quant, I got a 169. That indicates that I must have missed one question somewhere on the two scored quant sections. However, for both verbal and quant, I must have scored high enough on the first section to move on to the hard second section. I also got a third experimental quant section, which I do not think went very well. More on that to come. Additionally, I completed the essay, which I got an adequate score on, but didn't prioritize. Neither of these impacted my total score. On to strategy. Getting a perfect GRE score relies on two things, good study and good test day strategy. We'll start by focusing on study. Like most standardized tests, the GRE uses math, vocabulary, etc. as a foundation to test higher level skills. So critical thinking, the ability to recognize the most important information in a sentence or passage, identification of assumptions and edge cases, you know, the things that are important to graduate schools, future employers, etc. This means two things. First, your content knowledge must be at 100%, especially for quant. The content isn't ever the most difficult part of a question, but it is necessary to answer the question. Like we mentioned earlier, to get a perfect score, you may be able to miss one question. And that's only a maybe. Your best bet is to get every single question right. This means that you can't have any gaps in your knowledge. If you are somewhat weak on your solid geometry or sometimes forget your permutations formulas, you're gambling with your shot at a perfect score and doing yourself a major disservice. Second, because GRE questions are testing more than just content knowledge, we need to be thinking critically for every single question. There are too few questions on this test to waste any on simple, straightforward calculation. 
each problem is going to have something more to it that you'll need to identify in order to solve. Having analyzed and written hundreds of GRE style questions myself, I had a bit of an advantage here. I know how these questions are constructed and can often instantly recognize the tricks that the test makers like to put in to different types of problems. However, you can apply these same principles by asking, what's the trap on every problem you encounter? So rather than trusting that you got the correct answer on your own, consider what the test maker wants you to do. What do they want you to forget? What do they want you to mix up? What false shortcut do they want you to take? A good principle to take to heart. If the problem is easy right off the bat, you're probably missing something. This attitude will help you avoid traps on test day, but it will also help make your practice more effective. As you analyze more and more problems through the what's the trap lens, you'll learn a secret. That the folks who write these questions, myself included, aren't very original. You'll start to see the same types of traps over and over again and learn which types of problems lend themselves to different traps. This is the most empowering thing you can have on any standardized test. The ability to deconstruct problems, notice the traps laid for them, and then intentionally avoid them. So, how can you most effectively get your quant abilities across both content and strategy up to speed? Focus on high quality study over high volume study by maintaining an error focus. Taking a practice test and drilling practice problems is good prep, but the most effective prep comes afterward in careful review of problems you missed, skipped, or guessed on. It isn't useful to drill more problems if you're going to make the same mistakes all over again. If you make a mistake, you first want to identify why the correct answer is right and why your answer is wrong. But we can't stop there. We also want to analyze what mistake you made, why you made that mistake, and how to avoid that mistake in the future. So you're analyzing the problem, but you're also analyzing yourself, your approach, and your weaknesses. Now, sometimes it's just a content fix. Maybe you just need to review your exponent rules. But most often, it's a more far-reaching failure in process, something that could crop up in multiple problems. A computation error may be caused by a lack of effective scratch paper strategy. Reading the question wrong may be caused by allocating too little time to the question stem interpretation before jumping into solving. Picking an answer choice that isn't supported by the passage may be caused by a failure to predict. Not picking D on quantitative comparison may be caused by not considering zero as a possible edge case, and so on. Now, once you identify the root cause of the mistake you made, commit to never making that mistake again. To effectively do this, you should spend at least as much time reviewing your mistakes as you do drilling. This will also ensure that your study time is as valuable as possible. Individual tutoring with a GRE expert can be incredibly helpful for doing this kind of analysis. However, if you're self-studying like I was, creating an error log can help you to process this kind of information and provides an amazing study guide down the road. Now, as a note, question analysis is most effective with high quality, accurate materials. There are a lot of GRE materials out there, but not all of them are good. You wanna make sure you're studying the right skills, the right traps, the right difficulty, even the right phrasing. Official ETS material is the best for this. I highly recommend using the free Power Prep software for practice tests. If you need more practice, be sure to pick material that is up to date and accurate to the test. At Prep Scholar, we're committed to creating the most realistic practice problems on the market, barring the real thing, so the problems in the Prep Scholar online prep program are good candidates for question analysis and effective study. Finally, don't put much emphasis on AWA. It doesn't impact your total score, and grad schools really don't care much about it. Our main goal for this section is not to scare any grad schools. Attempting to raise your score beyond that isn't a very good use of your time, which would be much better spent on the quant and verbal sections or on other aspects of your application. However, if your AWA score is below average, it may raise red flags with grad schools, and further prep may be worth your time. On to test day strategy. First, we want to be sure we're bringing everything from our study to the testing center. This means using your error log to your advantage. Go through your how column and pick out the most valuable strategies and things to remember for test day. Review those in the days leading up to your test. By the morning of your exam, 
you should have the most important strategies for you at the front of your mind, ready to use whenever the need arises. We also want to be sure that we prepare the morning of the test. There are two important factors here. First, we need to wake up. Now, when I say wake up, I don't mean roll out of bed and walk out the door. A tired brain is a slow and easily tripped up brain, so it's important to make sure you are fully alert before you go into the GRE. Be sure to get out of bed early. Give your body enough time to regain consciousness before going into the testing center. Showering, stretching, going on a brisk walk, etc., all help to get your blood pumping oxygen to your muscles and your brain. Then, make sure to wake up your brain itself by getting it ready for the kind of material on the GRE. The two steps here are to read and comprehend something somewhat academic and to do some easy math. An easy way to do this is by doing two GRE practice problems of each question type. This is just enough to get your brain in gear, but not enough to wear you out before the test. In addition to waking up, we need to calm down. Test anxiety is real, and a lot of advice focuses on steps you can take during the test. However, you can do a lot to manage your anxiety before going into the exam. This is where waking up early has a second benefit. Not having to rush to the testing center, not having to worry if you hit traffic, etc., helps you prevent outside stress the morning of the test. Additional steps like gathering your ID, preparing any snacks, laying out your outfit the night before can help to reduce possible stressors the morning of the test. Now, bonus tip, pick an outfit with layers so you can adjust based on how warm or cold you are during the test. Just one more potential stressor you can avoid, and something I did on test day. Finally, while taking deep breaths is common advice, it's no joke. Conscious breathing can have a huge impact on your stress level. Be sure to steady your breathing before going into the test center so you can start the test on the right foot. Now, there are several steps you can take during the test itself that will help you get closer to that perfect score. The most important that I found is time management. Even if we can get every question right, if we spend too much time pursuing a solution that just isn't working or checking and rechecking an answer, we might not have enough time to answer every single question adequately. To stay on track for timing throughout the section, set checkpoints for yourself. Now, on average, quant questions should take two minutes and verbal questions should take one and a half minutes, but each question will take a different length of time. This means that checking the time after each question will do nothing but distract us. However, we should check in on our timing occasionally. I recommend checking in every five to 10 questions to see whether or not we're on track. Now, second, remember that because the test is section adaptive, we can skip around within a single section. This means that if a problem is eating up too much time or causing you to stress out and spin your wheels, your best move is to flag it and come back to it once you've at least gotten through the remaining problems. Now, the problems you decide to skip will be largely personal, since every test taker is different. A good way to determine which problems to skip is to use the 30 second rule, which we discuss in more detail in our GRE verbal time management video. Finally, we want to ensure that we maintain all of that work we did on our mental and emotional state throughout the test. Take your breaks, don't skip them. Use them as an opportunity to recenter yourself and think about your strategies for the next section. Similarly, if you find yourself getting overwhelmed mid-section, take a second to breathe. Remember all the preparation you did to handle this kind of scenario, think about your strategies, and then go back to work. One thing worth mentioning is that the experimental section can be particularly unnerving. When I took the GRE last year, the first section I got was a very hard quantitative section. And I work on this test for a living. <laughs> it really freaked me out that I was getting questions that I wasn't prepared for, and I was convinced that I missed quite a few. Reflecting on it now, I realized that this was likely the experimental section. Either that or my perception of the section was way off the mark. The anxiety that I felt coming out of that section could have easily caused me some points, but I made sure to keep a good, forward-thinking attitude as I moved through the sections. So, if you find a section particularly hard, do your best, and once the section is over, put it behind you. If it was a scored section, there's nothing you can do about it at this point, so there's no use in dwelling on it. It'll only hurt your performance moving forward. If it was experimental, it didn't matter anyway. And that's how I got an almost perfect GRE score. To recap, 
understand how the algorithm works. If you want a perfect score, you'll be getting the hardest questions the test has to offer in the second section, and you may not be able to miss any of them. Improve the value of your study by building a solid foundation of content knowledge, using what's the trap to figure out what questions are really testing, staying error focused to ensure that every mistake is a learning experience, and not emphasizing AWA. Improve your success on test day itself by focusing on strategy leading up to the exam, doing morning of prep, and using time management and mindfulness to stay on target during the test. Thanks again for watching and feel free to check us out at gre.prepscholar.com for more great GRE content. See you next time.